Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I am a watercolor artist. So my family and I are gonna be taking a vacation to the ocean in a couple of weeks, and we are so excited. So I've been Googling pictures and looking up pictures of the ocean and shells and fish, and I got inspired to paint you a fish. So I hope you enjoy the video. So to get started, we have our Arches watercolor paper. Um, I've got my Winsor Newton watercolors. I've got two paintbrushes, Grumbacher paintbrushes, a size two and a size six. I have my two cups of water, one for cool and one for warm colors, and a paper towel and a pencil. And then at the very end, we're gonna be bringing in these watercolor um, brush pens. Uh, the brand that I use is the Arteza. I know there's many different brands out there, but I just, I fell in love with this brand and I've been using it ever since. Um, so we're going to be pulling these in right at the end of the painting. So I'm going to show you how to use these as well. And I do have several other videos how to use these watercolor brush pens. So if you go back to um, my past videos, you will find several videos on these that I get a little bit more in depth with these um, brush pens. We're going to be starting out by sketching our betta fish. And it's just going to be kind of like a just an oval, almost like you're drawing an eye. Just an, an oval kind of with a point for his little mouth. So it almost looks like an eye. And leave some room because these betta fish are gorgeous. Their, their tails and their fins and everything, they're just beautiful. So leave some, um, some space here on the right side. Um, I mean, if you wanna center your fish, you can definitely center your fish. Just if you get really exaggerated with the fins, they might be bleeding off the side of your page. And if you don't want that, just move your betta fish a little bit more over, depending on which way your fish is going, of course. Mine is gonna be facing towards the left. All right, so you're gonna start out with this little oval shape. So it kind of looks like an eye at this point. And then you're gonna kind of bring out his little fin here, his little tail, and just be whimsical about this. You don't have to, you know, be, you know, too perfect about it. He's swimming in the water, so it's going every which way. It's just flowing. So, and you can always erase this part. This is just your pencil. If you wanna bring up um, a, a photo of maybe a betta fish on, on Google or something, you can definitely do that or just look through some books or whatever, Pinterest, and just find some images of fish that you really, really like. So I'm just kind of going off the top of my head because I've had several of these fish um, my whole life actually, and I just, I love them. I think they're gorgeous. So we're gonna be painting one of these today. And we can always alter and kind of maneuver which way the lines are going later on. So don't get too caught up in, you know, oh, that line's not too precise or whatever. You can always, with the paint, especially later on, you can always adjust your painting. All right, so that's kind of where I want his little tail. Now they've got these beautiful, like, fin, uh, like, I don't know, like wings coming out. They're gorgeous. And again, he's in water, so it's supposed to be very flowy. And these are huge as well. So he's got one coming out the top and one on the bottom. And I say he because I believe the male betta fish are the ones with the beautiful fins. The females are cute as well, but their fins are not as um, large for some reason. So we can always go in and adjust. I'm gonna bring this in like this and bring him back in. And then do the same thing on the bottom. And we can, like I said, we can always go in and adjust a little bit later where we want um, the placement of these. Because I have a feeling that I'm gonna make these a little bit larger than what I just drew. So. But we can always go in and adjust. Okay. And then make a little mark here where his face is gonna go because um, he's got a little eye right in the front here and you only see one eye on fish, obviously. The other side's got the other eye. So you're only gonna see one eye, depending on which way your fish is facing, but mine is facing this way. So we're looking at it sideways. And he's also got a little fin coming out this way too. More like a small one right on the side of his body. So again, if you wanna be a little bit more precise, you can go ahead and you can Google betta fish. And then you'll see a little bit more in detail of what they look like. 
All right, so that's about all I'm gonna do at this point. Actually, I want his tail to be a little bit more flowy because right now these are overtaking and his tail is just gorgeous. So I wanna make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. Just go in and erase your lines that you don't want. And you can even at this point, if you want to erase um, some of your lines just to make them a little bit um, lighter for your painting, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna leave my pencil marks nice and dark so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna go in with my number six and I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with his the fin on his little tail here. And I'm just going in and I'm putting in just some water. You don't wanna get it too saturated, but you want just enough water that your paint will flow. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that all in. And beta fish come in all sorts of colors. I'm gonna do a purpley blue one today because that's pretty much what I've had. Um, every time I buy a betta fish, it's always got like this purpley blue um, hue to it. So I love those. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick a blue. It doesn't matter what blue you pick. And just go in and dab in your paint. You can let it flow. You can help it if you want to. You can definitely help it. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick up some purple, some of my violet. I'm gonna add that in there too. Let the two kind of combine. And if you want his tail to be a solid color, um, you definitely could do that. Just play around with your water or your lights and darks of the color, just so you've got some dimension in there. Um, Cause I wouldn't make it just all solid one, one color, um, one, what am I trying to say? Just one uh, shade of it. I wouldn't do that because then it's going to look very flat. So always put in a couple different colors or if you are using one color, just play with your water so you've got the lights and the darks of that one color. All right, I'm going to pop in a little bit more purple down here. And I really like this blue. So I think I'm going to Add a little bit more blue down here. Okay, so that's about all. Let's see, I'm gonna right now, I'm not sure I like the way that this is flowing, so I am going to bring out some of my edges here, just so it's got a little bit more shape to it. So this is what I'm saying. You can always go ahead and start changing the shape with the paint. So don't worry about your pencil too much at the beginning of the painting because you can always go in and, sh and change it out. There, see how I made it a little bit more wavy? I like that better. There, that's pretty. And actually, I think I'm gonna bring this part of his tail out a little bit even more. And I'll pop in a little bit more blue right there. I'm gonna pop in a little more blue down here. Perfect. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and start doing his other um, other fins. So the same thing. And if you don't want these to bleed together, um, go ahead and dry this part. I'm gonna just wing it and just see if it bleeds. It bleeds, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but if you definitely don't want this and that bleeding together, then definitely dry this first. And I'm just gonna be careful kind of going up to it. All right, and I'm gonna add the same colors. My violet. Pop in a little violet down here. And you know what? And see how I made his fin just come back up to there? I think at this point I'm going to adjust it and I'm going to bring it coming down a little bit more. Just like that. And I'm letting one bleed into the other. Totally fine. Kind of shape our little fish there. I'm 
I want his little fin to kind of come up a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna pop in a little bit of my blue. That's pretty. I'm gonna pop in a little bit more blue. And we're gonna put detail in these fins later. So I wouldn't get too caught up on the, the, um, the detail at this point. This is just your first, first layer. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just adding my water. I'll go around that other little fin. All right, and I'm gonna add in, let's add in more blue this time. And I'm just letting that bleed and I'm guiding it along. Going around his little body, around his little fin. As long as you didn't put water there, the water is not gonna bleed. It only bleeds where you put water. So I wouldn't worry about it going on his body at this point. And I'll bring in some of my purple. And you can start shaping where his little um, fin is gonna be. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more this way, even though I didn't draw it with my pencil. I'm gonna close it up, the negative space here, I'm gonna close it up a little bit. And towards the end here, what I'm doing in this area and this area is I'm just bringing my paintbrush up. So I'm swooping it up just so you get these delicate little marks. Like that. That's really, really pretty. All right. So at this point, I am going to dry him because I'm going to go onto the body and I don't really want the body and the fins mixing together. So I'm going to go ahead and dry it so we can go onto the body. Okay, so our fish is nice and dry, and we're going to go on to the body part. So we're going to do the same thing. If you want to move over to your size 2, because the body's a little bit of a smaller area, you could do that. You can move to any size brush you want, really. I'm going to stick with my 6 until I feel like I can't do it anymore with the 6, get the, the detail that I want. But I am going to put the water on with my size 6. I'm going to go around that little fin again. He does have that little fin right there, and I'm just going to go around it. And we can go ahead and get his little face also. Even though we made that little line before, we can go ahead and get his little face also. Unless you want his little face to be a completely different color, then don't put the water on where his little face is. But that's up to you. All right. And I am going to make his body a little bit more purpley, I think. Add some of that in there. Go around that little fin. You can make his body as dark or light as you want. I'm gonna make his body a little bit darker, and I'll tell you why. Because I want his fins to look a little bit more um, thin and flowy and loose, um, if that makes sense. So in order to achieve that look, you want his body to be a little bit more solid. Um, because Obviously, the body is a little bit more solid. These are very flowy where the body is not. It's a little bit more solid. So I'm going to make the body a little bit darker, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Um, so I'm going to leave the, the fins alone and let them be very um, loose and light. So I'm going to add a little bit more purple. And you can go ahead and just keep layering this. Let it dry and just keep adding more layers if you want to. I am going to pop in a little bit of blue in there also. Maybe around his little fin here. And if you want, you can start adding some detail to his, his tail area, just so that the two flow together a little bit. Make sure you get all of his body. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and add another layer to it. Okay, so his body is, it's still a little damp, but that's okay. I'm going to switch over to my size 2 now because I'm going to be putting in a little bit more detail. 
So I'm gonna pick up some of the same colors. And right now, you could be popping in any color if you want. You wanna add a little yellow in there, a little pink in there, you can definitely do that. Um, maybe we will add in a little pink. But let me go ahead and add a little bit more purple first. So what I was saying before is you want the body to be a little bit darker than the wing, or the fin, I should say. So I'm gonna keep going and adding a little bit more. And he's got all those little scales on him, so it's okay if you get a little bit of that rough look. Because he's got scales all over. All right, so he's starting to get a little, uh, little darker. I'm leaving his face a little bit whiter because I just want a little variation there. Pop in a little bit more of that blue around his little fin. And I'm going to add a little more purple. He's starting to look really, really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to dry him and then add even more purple. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but see he is creating, it's naturally creating this line, this almost outline with the paint here, that darker edge. I love that. That's just the way the paint is drying. Um, if you don't like it, you can go ahead and add a little bit of water and kind of try and lighten it up a little bit. But it just defines your edges a little bit more, and this just naturally occurs as the paint is drying. And I love it, and I'm leaving it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add a little more purple. Oh, that's a lot of purple. Let me thin that up down a little bit. There we go. And if you want to leave some highlights on him, you totally can. And I think I'm going to leave some highlights in certain areas. So that just means leaving the lighter, the previous layer peeking through. Okay, so I'm gonna let his body dry. Actually, I'm gonna pop in a little bit more of that blue because I kind of lost that blue around his fin here. Pop in a little bit more of that blue. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start making some details. And I'm gonna do that with my number two. If you wanna to switch to a, a one or a zero, you totally can. And I'm just gonna lightly come up with some paint. Make sure you have enough paint on your brush. And I'm gonna make these little lines. Very delicate, you can go nice and slow. And you're just making some detail. Because the fins do have like these little veining marks on them. And you don't have to go all the way to the end of the fin if you don't want to. And they could be broken up lines, like I just, that one was broken up. And we're going to be bringing in the um, water, watercolor markers also, because those make beautiful, beautiful um, lines, very nice and crisp lines. So we're going to do a little bit of that with the watercolor brush pens also. I'm going to do the same thing to his fins, the top and the bottom. And you could pull in, um, if you wanted it to be the blue, the purple, whatever color you're using. And just let them kind of flow with the way your uh, fin is flowing here. You don't want to make them straight lines. You want to make them, you know, nice and curvy that they just go along with the flow and curve of your fin. And then you could do the top one. And I'm just going to turn my page just so it's easier for me. to get that, that curve. Pick up a little more paint if you need to. All 
pretty. Okay, so we're gonna deepen up this area right here where his little tail and his body meet. We're gonna deepen that up a little bit. Pop in a little bit of this darker blue. You can bring that out. Kind of mimic what you just did, but don't go all the way, maybe just halfway of what you just did. So pretty. And then I'm gonna deepen up the purple on his body in this area right here, just so they bleed together a little bit. Okay. And I'm gonna bring in a little bit of Payne's Gray for his eyeball. Now Fish's eyes, you can, you know, like I said before, you can always Google it, but it's kind of like a little circle. Don't have too much water on your brush. let that dry and I left a little highlight in his eye now let's do that last little fin there and if your body's still wet you can go ahead and dry it uh, mine is damp and I I'm just gonna go ahead and add my paint I'm not gonna dry it and I'm gonna have him have a blue fin right here pretty I might even add a little pink, like I said before. So let's pop in a little pink in his body. And I'm just dabbing it where it's wet already. I'm just gonna dab it, just so he's got a little pink in there. Wow, he's looking really pretty. All right, I'm gonna add a little more pink in this area. Just coming in lightly with my, my brush. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing to the top fin, maybe more pink in this area. Don't have too much water on your brush though. Like that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and dry this and we're gonna start bringing in our watercolor brush pens, which I'm super excited about because I love working with those. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. Okay, so I went ahead and I pulled a couple different um, watercolor brush pens. Again, I'm using the brand Arteza. There's many different brands out there, but I fell in love with this brand, so I am sticking with it. I pulled a teal, a true blue, and a neon pink. So we'll see how those colors look on here. So I'm gonna show you how to use those a little bit, even over your um, previous painting. So you could have started your whole fish with these brush pens, and maybe I will go ahead and do um, a fish with just the brush pens, just to show you what that looks like too. But in this painting, we did the regular watercolors first, the Windsor Newton, and now we're going over it with the brush pens. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of detail. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more of this teal on his tail. And see how nice, I don't know if you can pick this up on the camera, but see how nice and thin you can get these lines. And I'm just using the tip of this. I'm barely touching my paper. Now, obviously, if I was touching my paper all the way, the darker your line and thicker your line will be. But I'm barely touching my paper because I want to have just a nice, delicate, thin line. And that's just adding a little bit more detail to him. I'm going to go around. And again, if you're following along and you have the Arteza brush markers, um, I'm using the teal. It's kind of got this greenish look to it. And that's what I was hoping for. All right, that is gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of that onto uh, his body, I think. So I'm gonna make that little line again because that little line disappeared that we had made before for his little face. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna make some lines. And you can make them like little scales if you want to. You could be decorative about this. Have fun with your fish. It doesn't have to be realistic. I'm just gonna make some little, little scales. You could do polka dots, you could do diagonal lines. You don't have to do anything on the body if you don't want to. You do not have to do little scales. But I just wanted to add a little bit more detail. And then I think I'm just gonna outline it a little bit 
right on both edges right there. There. Beautiful. And actually, I want to add a little bit of that color even in here, even though you don't see it too much, I just want to add a little bit of that color on the darker part of that aqua that we did before. All right, I'm going to pick up my, my neon pink. And I know we added a little bit of pink down here. I'm going to just go ahead, do the same thing, lightly, barely touching your paper, just giving a really delicate little line. Remember, go with the curve of the, the, uh, the fin. Pretty. I'm going to do the same thing to this side. And just have fun with your little fish. I mean, there's all different colors, all different shapes. I love painting fish. I love painting sea life and shells. I love painting flowers, landscapes, anything to do with nature. I just, I love it. That's one of my passions. All right, and then now we're gonna pick up this true blue, and I'm gonna just kind of outline this little wing. This, I keep calling it a wing, but it's not a wing. It's his little fin that's the one that's the smallest attached to his little body. I'm gonna outline it, and I'm gonna just give it just a little bit of detail also. Yeah, just like that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of water and see what happens. You know, actually, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of that true blue on the edges of his um, tail here before I add the water. I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to kind of outline it a little bit. You don't have to outline the whole thing. I'm going to leave a little bit that's not highlighted or outlined, I should say. Like that just so it gives it a little bit of movement. You want some movement in this little tail here. And if you want, you can bring in those lines even going the other way. Just remember to kind of imagine that they're connected. The lines that you did over here, those greenish aqua ones, just kind of act like they are supposed to be connected to each other, even though they don't have to connect. I think I'm gonna put a few more this way. And actually I'm gonna use a little bit of that blue and kind of go under here a little bit, just so it pulls in some darker colors even though we still want this, his little fins to be lighter than his body. All right, so let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and move back to my size six. I'm just gonna drop in some water and see how these watercolor brush pens just bleed on their own. And actually, I think it's beautiful when you go outside the line here. See how I'm going outside the line? And it gives it this like very thin, beautiful, flowy look. And you can go with the same movement with the brush as you did with the brush pen. With those little lines, you can do the same movement. You wanna go with the flow of the, the fin, not against it. And here again, I wanna add a little bit of water to the outside, just so it's got that like see-through looking little fin, like it's really, really thin there. Really pretty. And you can bring that out as much as you want. I'm gonna exaggerate this a little bit. That is so pretty. All right, and I'm gonna see what it looks like now with just adding a little water to these, the pink lines that we made. And it's gonna start blending them out a little bit. See how it's turning purple already? I 
I'm just adding a little water, kind of mimicking the movement that I just did. Let's go ahead and darken up that dark blue that we did under here. Wow, that's really pretty. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit of the water now to that green that we did on the inside of his body. And I'm just tapping it just to get that marker nice and um, wet so that it just starts activating that the, the, uh, the marker and it just kind of lays where it wants to lay. You can bring it in the, the face a little bit Go around his little eye. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of water on the beginning of his little fins here. Like that. Maybe bring it out just a little bit. But not too much, because I want those fins to be highlighted so that you could still see them. You don't want them blending in with the body too much. All right, I am going to darken up, let's see. Actually, he's perfect the way he is, but I think I want to just keep playing around with him a little bit. Maybe I'll just add a little bit of dots and just see what happens here. I'm just going to activate some of that, those green lines and make some dots. Wow, look what that did. That's really, really pretty. And that's just making dots with water on top of my watercolor brush pens. So pretty. All right, let's see if that happens down here too. get water and I might have activated this paint enough that it's not going to do it but we could try wow all right I'm going to deepen up his little eye you can use the black watercolor marker if you want or you could just go back in with your little brush and I'm just adding a little bit Payne's gray again oops and I kind of got rid of that little highlight I made but that's okay we can always go in and fix that little highlight. I'm adding a little bit of Payne's Gray in the parts that I want it to be a little bit darker on his body and his little fins here. So you still see a little bit of that scaling. You don't see a lot of it because we did put water over it, but you still see some of it peeking through, which is really nice. Just little hints of it. That's pretty. Gosh, I just love making these fish. They're just so, I mean, you can make all sorts of, you can do a whole series of these and just make them all different colors. It, they're just beautiful. All right, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of that Payne's Gray on the inside of his fin, but not too much, because I really wanted these fins to be a little bit lighter than his body. But maybe down here we can add a little bit, just so it darkens it up a little bit. Add a little water so it bleeds in. You could just pounce the water if you want to, making kind of like a polka dot motion like we did with the fin here. So he's got a little bit of a polka dot motion. And I think I'm gonna just darken up his body a little bit more. I'm just adding some purple again. Just deepening up his body a little bit. And you can just Kind of pounce your brush to keep along with that scale look. Just pounce your brush a little bit. So pretty. I'm going to go ahead and dry this and see how it looks. Okay, so everything's dry on my fish but the eye. I added a little bit too much water there and that got rid of my highlight. But once that dries, I can go in with a little bit of my white acrylic um, ink here. And you could just put a little dot right in the middle of the eye just to brighten it back up. Um, so we're going to do that later. But what I wanted to do now is just add a little bit of detail. Um, we could just totally leave our painting like this. You can cut it out. You can do whatever you want with it. But I'm just going to take this one step further, and I'm going to add a little bit of water and maybe a little bit of, like, seaweed. So I'm just going to take a blue, different color blue than my fish, 
And I'm just gonna pop in a little bit of blue here and there around my fish. And you could wet your, your paint, your uh, paper first if you want to. I'm just gonna go around my fish with the dry paper. And you could have done this at the beginning if you wanted to also and just, you know, did your whole page. I wasn't, at that time, I didn't think I was gonna take this a step further. Otherwise, I would have probably uh, put my, um, my paint down first, obviously. Just go around your little fish. Don't forget the inner part here. Just dab it in. And I'm just going around with just a light, light blue. And I'm leaving a little bit of highlight around his body also, just so he pops out a little bit. You don't have to, you can bump right up to your fish if you like that look. You could totally do that. And another thing is, if you did put the water first before you did your fish, you might not get these vibrant colors because the reason you got those vibrant colors is because you were working right directly onto the white paper. So what you might wanna do is draw your fish out and before you paint him, go and just go around your fish if you want to. Um, so that way you leave your fish nice and white and um, then you get those nice vibrant colors. So let's just pop in a little bit more blue here. So it doesn't really matter. There's many different ways you can pop in the background. Some people prefer to do it first. Some people prefer to do it very, the last thing you do, um, it doesn't really matter. You're, as long as you pop in your background if that's what you want. All right, so I'm just gonna do mostly just down towards the bottom here. And then I'm gonna pop in some seaweed. All right, I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna pop in some seaweed with my watercolor brush pens. Okay, so he's nice and dry, of course, except for that little eye, that darn little eye, I added way too much water on him. And I could always pick that up with a little bit of my um, paper towel, but I don't want to. I just wanna let it dry and let it do its thing. Um, also, if you are gonna paint the background, if you wanted to tape off your paper first, you could have done that. Me, I don't really care about it, you know, bending. Uh, my paper bending like this, once I put it in a frame, it's gonna flatten really nicely anyways. You could always put it between books. You can al always just um, lightly iron it, put like a cloth over it and lightly, very lightly iron it if you want to. I would do it probably face down with a cloth over it and just lightly iron it. You could do that as well. So there's many different ways to get your paper nice and flat again. So, and I'm the type of person that likes to move my paper around as I'm painting so I can get my lines very precise. So I don't like to pa um, tape it down very often. Unless maybe I taped it maybe to a small board and I can move the whole board with it. So that's totally up to you. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna pull in a little bit of um, yellow. I'm using, it's called Sunset Yellow. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of seaweed in here. And we'll bring in some greens also. And just here again, Google seaweed or corals or whatever you want. I love doing underwater themes. Um, I think I actually have a couple painting or uh, videos of my paintings that I actually do that I sell at art fairs. And it's a lot of like underwater themes, which is really funny because I don't live, well, I live by Lake Michigan, but there's not really these kind of fish in Lake Michigan. Um, but I think I am drawn to the ocean and I think this is just what I love to be painting. So I'm trying to convince my husband to move closer to the ocean one day. So we'll see if that ever happens because I think that's where my heart is. But, in the meantime, I will just be painting these. All right, so we can bring in some coral or seaweed this way. And I'm just making them very, very loose, very whimsical. Um, if you wanna get more precise, you know, Google your images. All right, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of a purpley one, a darker purple, not the same purple that we used on the fish. And Maybe this one I'll do a little bit thicker just so you have some different variations and you can overlap them. And I'm not filling it in yet because I'm gonna do that with my brush later. But if you wanted to fill it in right now, you could totally do that as well. But I like lights and darks, the push and pull of a, a, a color being light and dark. So I'm not gonna fill it in. I'm just gonna let it do its natural thing with the brush and water later. Almost like you're coloring it in. So I'm just outlining it at this point. 
We're just gonna bring in a little bit here and there. I don't wanna take away from my fish, so I'm not gonna to add too much because my fish is supposed to be obviously um, the main focal point of this painting. But I will add a little bit here and there. Maybe a little bit down here. And you can add as many colors as you want. You can even pull in a green, different color blues, maybe some oranges would be gorgeous in here. All right, so I'm gonna take my number two brush again and not that much water because you don't want it to bleed all over the place. But see how I'm activating this? You just add a little bit of water right in the middle and it fills it in on its own. It does leave a little bit of an outline mark. If you don't like that outline mark, then fill your shapes at the beginning. I don't mind that outline mark. I think it looks really, really uh, whimsical. But I am more of a whimsical artist. I'm not a realist artist. I'm more of a whimsical, colorful artist. So that's the look I like. But if it, that's not the look you like, go ahead and fill it in with the watercolor marker um, right in the beginning. That's pretty. I just wanted to add a little bit, just to give a little bit of atmosphere to my, um, my fish. A little bit of a surrounding for him. And you can always go over your yellow as well. I'm gonna leave my yellow alone, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a lighter um, purple. So it looks like there's some in the distance. So the more precise, the more dark, the the um, more detailed your image is, it's more in the foreground. Um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's say I bring in some curl this way, nice and light. Let's make that a little lighter. This will look like it's in the background, okay? Because it's nice and light, it doesn't have as much detail. So that will look like it's in the background. So you can add some of these in anywhere you want as well. And again, overlap your images, totally fine. So it just gives it, a, it fills in your, your space a little bit nice, a little bit nicer. So see how those look like they're more in the background and these are like more in the foreground? That's just the look you're going for. You could have done this with any color. I just chose to stay with purple, just not to confuse the eye too much because I really want the focal point to be my fish. The more colors you start adding to the background, your focal point might not be as pronounced. There, pretty. I think he's gorgeous, just like that. Um, if you wanted to add a little orange or whatever in here, because right now I feel like I need to add some orange in here, um, let's go ahead and add a little orange. I don't know why, but that's what I'm feeling at the moment. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of orange on this fish. I don't know why that's what I'm feeling, but I am. But I also don't wanna muddy up my fish too much. So, um, cause the blue and the orange are compliments and they will make brown when you um, put them together. So try not to muddy up your colors too much, but I just wanted to pop in a little something in there. So there you go. There's my little beta fish. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more videos like this one. Thanks, have a great day, bye.